Welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about something that's super important when it comes to metabolism that many people kind of miss the boat on. And it has to do with chromatin, it has to do with epigenetics, and this is the software that's running your genomic hardware. I'll define all that stuff in a minute, but just wanna welcome you back to High Intensity Health. I'm your host, Mike Mutzel. Very grateful that you are here. If at any point you enjoy this content, definitely hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe so you get little notification, little ping when we launch new videos like this. And if you have any comments, any questions, hit them below. I do follow those and articles that we're gonna talk about um, today and in this video will be linked below. So I don't need to sell you on all the health benefits of going keto, of compressing your feeding pattern, like whether it's intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding or eating one meal a day. I don't need to sell you on the health benefits of exercise. You already probably are familiar with the reduction in glucose, reduction in inflammation, reduction in insulin. Um, oftentimes people's triglycerides uh, go down, blood pressure goes down, you know, when they do these three things. Again, eating low carb, compressing the feeding window, which means intermittent fasting, time restricted feeding, OMAD, all that sort of stuff, and exercise. All these things, and the reason why I'm clumping these, these three things together is because these three lifestyle practices that I really espouse you living by and I live myself and I encourage all my clients to do th these three things is they rely upon a fatty acid metabolism. And so we're instead of relying on glucose oxidation, glycolysis and depleting our NAD, which is this critical intracellular cofactor involved with longevity, when we rely upon more fatty acid oxidation and ketone utilization, we affect the software that runs our genomic hardware, that is our epigenomics, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit today about epigenetics. The paper that we're talking about, the impact of cellular metabolism on chromatin dynamics and epigenetics. So chromatin has to do with how your genes are compartmentalized and packaged in your cells. And so let's just kind of talk a little bit more about that and then we'll we'll kind of synergize uh, back on the health benefits of, of relying more upon fats and how the metabolites created through this fatty acid oxidation metabolism affects your epigenomics in a favorable manner. So um, let's just make a quick analogy. So a lot of you have cell phones, you have computers, you have tech, right? Uh, you know that you get updates all the time, whether you're working on a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or you're on Instagram, you get a little ping from Android or the Apple uh, you know, app store saying, hey, there's a new version of this software. So your software is constantly updating, right? That doesn't mean that the hardware on the device that you're using is changing. It's not like your computer's changing, it's just the software. So your body's kind of the same way, where every single cell in your body, between 10 and 30 trillion cells, depending upon who you ask, right? Depending upon whether you include microbes, microbiome uh, tissue or not, you have tens of trillions of cells. Every single cell has the same exact hardware program, the same exact genomic, the same genes, like the genes don't change. So the genes in your eye are the same genes on skin tissue. The, the, the genes that, that make hair follicles contain the same material as the genes that make your heart <laughs> beat, which seems a little crazy. How, how could there be so much tissue specificity and differentiation? Well, it has to do with the software. So the software that is running your genomic hardware is called epigenetics. And epi is the prefix meaning above. So the software is above, it's tinkering around with your hardware. Now, this software is highly malleable. It's influenced by, you can, you're, you actually, your parents influenced your own software by what the foods that they ate and the stress that they were under, the toxins that they were exposed to, uh, all these sort of things. So both your dad and your mom, there's you know, maternal and paternal epigenetic transgenerational effects. This means that you know, what our parents, what our grandparents, what our great grandparents ate, how they thought, the, you know, again, the, the chemicals that they were exposed to, it's affecting our own epigenome, okay? This has been well characterized in the literature for a very long time. Uh, what comes to mind is like the Dutch famine and so forth, and there's been a lot of different studies that have come out. Even a recent study that came out this last week, which I'll link below again to the resources, where uh, researchers stratified individuals based upon low birth weight babies compared to high birth weight babies, and they fasted these two different cohorts for the same duration, 36 hours. And then what they did is at the end of the 36 hours, they looked at the metabolites in their bloodstream and they found that the metabolites are in, that are responsible for or involved in 
glucose utilization, fatty acid oxidation, ketone synthesis, and all that were totally different based upon birth weight. Birth weight has to do with epigenetics. It has to do with the software. So low birth weight babies are theorized to have a little bit more epigenetic stress. And so um, later in life, they might have more predisposition towards, and, and epidemiological studies have shown this, more inclination to develop cardiometabolic disorders. So again, birth weight is not really influenced by genes. The genes aren't changing. It's the epigenome and the intrauterine environment. And so getting back to keto, getting back to fasting, getting back to exercise. So the way in which we process, whether if we eat pasta and bread and sugar and Coke or in Twinkies, or we eat real food, grass-fed beef, you know, uh, eggs, free-range eggs, you know, grass-fed whey protein and all that, right? The path that we get to ultimately make cellular energy affects this genomic structure, which is called chromatin. Okay, so if we think about like, how do you kind of characterize the epigenome, it just has to do with how the genes are coiled up. And again, if you're a geneticist or a cellular biologist, I'm making this so simple, so I apologize for kind of botching it, but I just want people to you know, kind of memorize this and, and, and not, I'm not gonna get lost in the weeds of CPG islands or uh, chromatin modifications, but we need to think about your DNA being wrapped around these histone-like proteins like, like fishing string is wrapped around a reel. You know, fishing string can be a big mess when it's all loose, or it can be very tight when, it, when it's wrapped around the, the reel. So an opened region of, uh, say, chromatin would be more indicative of uh, acetyl groups, and you might remember hearing about acetyl groups before if you've been a longtime subscriber of this channel because we talked a lot about that. This would be a region of, say, a, a gene that's being turned on, and, and a lot of methylation, a lot of methyl groups would be around chromatin, and this would be characteristic of, of genetic expression not being expressed. So genes would be turned off, for example. Again, same genes in both, but one is being turned on, one is being turned off. What turns out that the uh, these different groups that we're talking about, whether it's methylation groups, whether it's acetyl groups, and there's many other you know, different uh, ways of affecting chromatin structure, uh, that is the epigenome. Uh, there's many different things that can affect this, not just acetyl groups and methyl groups, but those are the most commonly characterized. But your metabolism and the metabolic pathways that you're stimulating or not stimulating affect this. And again, so this is going back to kind of where we started this video off with, again, a lot of people talk about keto, a lot of people talk about intermittent fasting for lowering glucose, lowering insulin, affecting intrahepatic fat, the fat that accumulates or can accumulate in people's livers, create non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, all these things. There's a lot of benefits to being low carb keto for that reason. But what I'm talking to you today about, the, the thing that I wanna stick in your head is the metabolic pathways that you are stimulating by fasting, eating low carb or exercise, those synergizing and create more acetyl groups which do affect sirtuins, which do affect chromatin structure. So. It's not just about calories in and calories out. It's the, the processes, the systems, the way in which you metabolize the foods that you're eating ultimately affect which genes are being turned on or turned off because the availability of these metabolites influences chromatin structure by way of epigenetics. And this is all talked about in this paper that we're diving into this video. So I do have some quotes I just wanted to read to you, which I think is actually very succinct, actually way more succinct than what I can speak to you about today. Uh, so again, the, the title of this paper, which I'll link below, it's called The Impact of Cellular Metabolism on Chromatin Dynamics and Epigenetics. So again, chromatin is just a way to kind of characterize um, the, the epigenomic structure of DNA, which by the way, you can measure. And we have another video, I haven't yet posted it, but I will link it here when it's available. And it has to do with testing these CPG islands, which can characterize your epigenetic age. So I'm 37 year, years old right now, as I make this video, but I just did my MyDNA test, which looks at my epigenetic patterns based upon a lot of mathematical models and centenarians and other diseases. You know, we're not, basically, we're not all aging at the same r biological rate. We're all aging at the same chronological rate, but not the same biological rate. And so I wanna see if my diet, my lifestyle, my mindset, my sleep patterns, my exercise patterns, my fasting patterns, if those are affecting my epigenetic age. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. I make no money from promoting this technology, this test. The link is below to my DNA. And again, it's looking at characteristic CPG islands based on over 2000 methylation patterns in the body 
to give you a good insight as to uh, your biological age, okay? So let me just talk about uh, just a few quotes as we end this video. And if you wanna learn more about this, we'll be talking much more about this uh, in future videos, but the substrates used to modify nucleic acid and chromatin are modified by nutrient availability and the activity of metabolic pathways. So again, if you're relying upon more of say a glucose centric metabolism, your metabolic pathways are, are, are gonna, and, and the chromatin, that is the epigenome is gonna be influenced and it's gonna be pulled in a different direction compared to if you're relying more upon fatty acid oxidation and ketone utilization. Uh, I have another quote here that I thought was very, very important, which is indicating that alterations in metabolic pathways drive chromatin dynamics. So if we have alterations in a very basic pathway like glucose utilization or insulin metabolism, we're gonna have alterations in how our genes are being ex expressed and how they're sitting in our cells. So very important stuff. And the last little fun fact that I wanna leave you with in this video is our, our software that's running our genomic hardware called the epigenome is influenced by up to 10 generations, okay? So what our great, 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 great grandparents ate, what they were exposed to, the chemicals they were exposed to is influencing us now. We kind of talked about that study of the birth weight babies, low birth weight babies compared to high birth weight babies. That, that's a, an example, but this is very important. Epigenetics is super important. I, I highly consider that you learn a little bit more about it. Watch a few videos on the topic. It'll blow your mind. And we now have tools and technology that can measure the structure of our epigenome, our epigenetic clock. And the cool thing is this is malleable. This is, there's stuff we can do about this. Knowing your genes is important. But yeah, you can change your diet and lifestyle. But if you have a really yucky gene, like you're like, well, what do I do about that, right? How, I, you know, but, but what's really unique is you can see changes in the DNA methylation patterns based upon um, you know, how you're living your life. So I think it's very important stuff. I wanna know if you think it's important because if you do, we'll make more videos on this topic so that you can better learn new ways to improve your life and your health. So super grateful that you tuned in all the way. Uh, please leave a comment below letting me know if you like this content and we'll do more on it. So have an awesome day, guys. Appreciate you tuning in all the way.